David X. Tyler here at the Israel International Off Season Competition, checking in team number 3339, Bumblebee. The team was number one uh, at Newton Division this year, and number one seed. And uh, I've been following Bumblebee for a lot of years, by the way, a fantastic team. Help me speak more about this team, by the way. I have Elio and Iran. Everybody following the course, the cargo journey through, uh, but talking about some of their shoot on the move capabilities that they're doing as well. So looking forward to hearing more about that. And of course, uh, Bumblebee this year, a great climber, really a complete package, a great robot coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. First updates now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. First, alumni and mentors are making Stryker a top priority for their internships and careers. That's because Stryker knows that those in first are the leaders and innovators of tomorrow. If you want to help make the world a better place by creating life-saving medical devices and technology, get started at careers.stryker.com. Continue your excitement of robotics at Kettering University with their combat robotics team and first center. Turn your robotics experience into a professional career. Find out more and get your application started at kettering.edu slash apply. Let's start out on your intake of your robot here. Talk to me about uh, what's gone into making it. Bumblebee has done such a good job with cargo acquisition this year. So I'd love to hear more about how did you come up with this intake and any changes you might have made as well. So uh, last year in uh, Infinite Recharge, so we have also had a four, uh, four bar intake, four bar mechanism. So we, uh, because the same the cargo is still a ball, so we wanted to go, we, we go to the, the same mechanic. Um, in the championship, instead of this roller, we had this uh, 3, 3D printed uh, wheels with a rubber or o-ring that you push into. Um, we saw a lot of teams use this grip tape. And we wanted to uh, try it as well, and we saw it that it goes very well, and uh, we kept we kept with it. Um, conveyor. All right. So next up is our conveyor. We used to have uh, one conveyor where we would have just rubber bands, and they would turn the turn the ball up and get him to the shooter. And what happened is he got to the ball, the cargo that went in the conveyor got into inconsistent states at different times. So how we, how we fix that is we created conveyors in plural, one horizontal, one vertical, on the two axes. What we did is, once the ball reaches here, about this point in the conveyor, the conveyor takes him up to this point where you have a color sensor, all right? This color sensor says that he sees the ball, okay? When we're collecting, of course, the intake and the conveyor work in harmony, this guy does not work, the vertical one, because he transfers the ball to the shooter, all right? So once the first ball is in, we collect the second ball, we push the ball up a bit, so he always gets to the same state, all right? The second ball comes in, we have a distance sensor, IR sensor, all right? So what happens here is, once we have the two cargo in our robot, if we want to shoot or eject, let's say, let's say we want to shoot, uh, our first ball comes up to the shooter, we shoot, and then after what happens, it's also in the software, uh, the IR sensor knows that there's a ball here and there isn't a ball here. So what happens is the ball transfers up to the vertical conveyor. And this goes on, so on and so forth, the whole game. Uh, this happens automatically. Well, well, let's demonstrate that in just a little bit. I think uh, before that, let's talk about your shooter first. Uh, so uh, let's start up with you and, and talk about uh, you guys have been looking at doing more and more on shooting the move uh, as yes. well too, right? So talk to me about how that's been working for your team and maybe other advice to uh, other teams who are looking maybe trying that for the first time too. Okay. Shooting on the move, uh, it's a big subject. It's not easy at all to implement. Uh, what we have to do is we have to take in account the speed of the robot, the velocity of the robot, the velocity of the ball, and our current distance from the target. And from that, uh, using vectors and maps, what we can do is we can gather where we are now, where we are now on the field uh, relative to the target. We know our distance, velocity of the robot, velocity of the ball. We know where, where to turn the turret to, uh, always to the target. If we're moving, let's say, to the right, we shift our turret a bit to the left. So what happens is it shoots directly to the target. This is all depending on our speed and stuff. So that's uh, approximately how we implement our shooting while on the move. 
Let's talk about the turret itself as well, too, for more of the mechanical side that's gone into it and the uh, shooter itself. So uh, you guys got a lot of these uh, kind of these uh, pre-speed wheels going into it. Uh, one thing I've seen when I watch your shot is it seems like you got your spin really under control and you're able to just shoot into the hub and just look so accurate as it goes through. So talk to me about the general structure and any changes throughout the season you made for it, too. Um, so in our prototype testing, we only use like this big four-inch wheel and the back one. And we saw that uh, it wasn't really helping it. Like we used the backspin, but we saw that like only one wheel wasn't enough. So we added, added like a bunch of more walls. So it created like a path for the ball to go through and then go clean into the target with a backspin. Um, because of our converter um, changes, uh, the ball came up very, very fast with a high velocity. So it was jumping between the rollers now. So we added uh, one more roll here with Colson's. We added more rolls here with Colson wheels. So the ball comes up and then it has have more path for it and no, it doesn't jump anymore. Um, our hood and the HDX uh, rev motor. Hood, hood. Um, we so didn't want to use so a, a very oh. heavy motor because a light. we it's knew a our load. system will, will be a, a bit high. Uh, so so we came up with this. Uh, use Some. And it has a uh, potentiometer and HDX right here. Uh, rev motor. A, um, we, we didn't want to use a, to a very heavy motor. You can see what happened is once the first ball went up and uh, reached the shoe and went out with me blocking it, uh, the second ball came up to the vertical conveyor automatically, and then from then on, we shot that one. As you can see, it kind of flew. He's not your primary operator, is he? No, no. Okay, that's good then. So, all right, for sure. So, uh, let's continue on this robot. Uh, talk about your climber as we tend to wrap up on here. Uh, like I said, Bumblebee, once again, been doing such a great job with the full package on it. So, I'd love to hear more about what's gone into your climber. Uh, talk about, like, some of the pneumatics. And if we can demonstrate the stages happening, too, that'd be great. So uh, this season we were more focused on like all the other systems, so we didn't have much time to implement uh, our climber system to its maximum. In District 2 of the Israeli second district, we only had these ones, and we only climbed to the second bar. And after it, we added um, these sliders that this uh, pist small piston here holds it in place. And when we are ready to shoot, our turret moves to the right position so both sliders can pop up and then sequence um, so it gets in place tarim and the slider go up and uh, as, and, we, and, the, and these uh, arms go up as well with it tarim so we get onto the bar, and then now when we are on the bar, disc holds the on the bar, and then we can move to the other bars. Piston, piston. Then we move to the other bar, and so on and so on. Well, Bumblebee, thank you so much for taking time to tell us more about your robot and your team as well. Uh, like I said, I've been following you for many years and looking forward to, of course, how you do here at this event, but really future years as well and see what your team thank brings. You. So congratulations on a great year this year, but good luck in future years as well. Thanks thank a lot. You. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Continue your excitement of robotics at Kettering University with their combat robotics team and FIRST Center. Turn your robotics experience into a professional career. Find out more and get your application started at kettering.edu slash apply. FIRST alumni and mentors are making Stryker a top priority for their internships and careers. That's because Stryker knows that those in FIRST are the leaders and innovators of tomorrow. If you want to help make the world a better place by creating life-saving medical devices and technology, get started at careers.stryker.com.